Okay, you did. Yay, I did. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I can't hear you anymore. Are you kidding me? Can you hear me? I can hear you, Raven. Okay, great. So we've had this technical difficulty. Oh, dear. Um, from uh, earlier today where my mic oh, was not getting picked up by Raven. I think she muted the wrong thing. So we'll just give I it a did. sec for her to sort that out. There we go. That's amazing. <laughs> Um, there's another thing that happens that um, since Raven takes care of the chat, if we have the volume on in both of her windows, then this like whole echo chamber horribleness happens. So I think amidst that process, uh, we replicated our earlier technical difficulties, but corrected. Her hello, hooray, happy Monday. Hello, my darlings. <laughs> hello, my starlings. Hello, my boodles and doodles. You are here with Death and Tarot. I'm Allie. And my lovely, ever, ever effervescent Raven, say hi. Yeah, technologically inept, muting the screen and computer that's being used to broadcast. Excellent. Hi, everybody. Oh, we've got some new, we've got a new person. Hello. Oh, fun. Hello, Holly. Oh, hi, Holly. I know who that is. Oh, and there's, there's Gwen and Katzi and I already said hello, to, I said hello to Colleen and Marcella. Hi, everybody. Hi, all of our peoples. Thank you for coming again. Yay. Um, so to this uh, month, this month is the month. This is mm -hmm. August. All right. Yeah. <laughs> this month we're doing spread crafting. Because it's hard sometimes. <laughs> right. And because no matter how many times people talk about it or share resources on it, there's always something a little bit new to be gained and discovered. And when you get a lot of tarot readers together to talk about it, I'm positive we'll come up with something new. So yes, 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 yes. Um, so I think first off we wanted to talk about like, why do we bother with spreads in the first place, which it might seem pretty obvious, but I think some of you may have other ideas. We might have ideas you haven't thought of that, that whole thing Raven just said. Um, <laughs> so, I spread craft so that I have an interpretor, or not spread craft, but I use spreads. So I have an interpretation point. I like to know how I'm reading each card. Like when I'm reading for myself, I don't care. I'll like flop them down and just be like, drag me, bitch, um, <laughs> <laughs> to the deck. Uh, but if I'm reading for someone else or if there's actually like a really specific thing, I'm just like, okay, I, I need to figure this out. I, I turn to a spread so I know I have the, that like, you know, what, what specific questions am I answering? What's going on here? Yeah, that works. That's it? Yep. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean to make that sound so dismissive. Well, that's why I use spreads. Um, I just didn't want to interrupt you. That's all. That's all. Okay. Um, I use spreads. Because spiritually, philosophically, I kind of feel like you can't get an answer unless you ask a question. Energetically, that's like a worldview that I have. If you don't ask, you won't get an answer. So yeah, yeah, you can like throw down cards and have a conversation. And that works when you're, you're open to that. Maybe it might just be just me that sucks at that and can't. <laughs> cannot comprehend what's going on unless there's a framework for the card and my question to sit in. So that's why I spread craft and I, I do it a lot. Nice. Yes. I, I spread craft quite a bit. It started off like when I started spread crafting and okay. So like even before I'd find spreads just on like eclectic tarot, that would be how I'd, I'd sort of track down the spreads Me and too. I love it's such an amazing resource. There's so many. What? And uh, one of the moderators of the forum made like beautiful lists. So it's so easy to find them for like a forum. It's amazing. I loved it. Uh, but then I was, it became apparent that it's when you have a personal question or you have a personal situation going on, Sometimes you need to like make your own spread to figure things out on your own terms and like going to where other people have made spreads like that's great they worked for them in those situations and maybe for very general ones but I I really needed to like 
<laughs> just like, okay, this doesn't work for me. My, my practice is not the exact same as anyone else's practice. So I need, I need my own spreads. I need these for myself. And I don't know if other, I mean, I'm glad you do it. I know I do it. I'm wondering real quickly if other people do it, if they see someone else's spread and they're like, ah, oh, this doesn't quite work for me. If they start changing it a little bit, I feel like that is such a valuable thing to do is to take someone's existing stuff and make it work for you. Well, and yeah, that's the same as like it, with magic. Like if there's a spell that, you know, rosemary does not mean prosperity to you, then you can switch it the freak out for something that does. Like mm -hmm. it's having those tools that other people have made for us is great. And having the, them put them out there as being like, go forth and use these, super great. But if we can't use them the way that they were made specifically for what we're looking for, like the Celtic cross, classic, classic example, the Celtic cross. <sighs> <laughs> Do you have a bucket, Andy? I should have like warned you for that. I know, I need one. I am um, not gonna go off on a tangent. Sticking to the topic, continue. <laughs> well, no, it's just so many people adapt the Celtic cross because it comes from a time and works in a really specific way that I think the shape of it is very pleasing and I use that five shape a lot. Um, and that like there's po there's potential there for people to work with it. And I think that's like what the most adapted spread. Also, it's one of the most used spreads. So there's, there's that too. Yeah, people either love it or hate it. I don't think I know anyone who's just like, yeah, I use it every other week because it's fine. No. Um, by the way, a lot of other people customize and tweak spreads. Gorgeous. We're not alone. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, so when it comes to customizing and tweaking, it's easy because, well, I mean, it's not easy, but like you'll look at something and you'll say, okay, this isn't what I want it to be what do I want it to be? And then you'd make the changes accordingly. But when it comes to actually building your own spread from scratch, that's what, that's the meat of what we're going to talk about here. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we touched on three, three main areas of consideration for building one spread and different ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the first one we were going to talk about, I think we said size, but I kind of want to talk about questions first. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure why we started with size. <laughs> I think that was the first thing out of my mouth, and then we went with it. Let's start with questions. I okay. Think, yeah. Yeah, honestly, size, I think, should be last. <laughs> That's the very, because size depends on how many questions you have, how many questions need to be answered. Okay. Uh, questions. That is the, the meat of any spread and when we were thank you to everyone by the way who submitted a um a tarot spread request to us we we did pick someone we did pick a particular question and Allie and I both created independently spreads for this question which we will share with you a little bit later and I don't know you guys can vote or spread shame us whatever you want <laughs> <laughs> spread shame us <laughs> Um, what the hell was I talking about? We were talking about uh, the questions that go into making spreads. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So there is um, do you remember this very well? Because I don't. I know it, it's you came you came up with a really brilliant distinct distinction between basing a spread off of one question or basing it off of basically a category of questions. Right. So I, I, I think the way I was thinking about it is that when we come to tarot, sometimes we have like one really specific, like, I need to know about this. Like, I have to figure this problem out. It's, it's, it's a problem solving kind of question that it's, uh, I can't do something. How am I going to get past that? Or this thing is happening. How am I going to deal with it? Um, what's going to happen in this situation? Like very, very specific. And I think with those specific questions, we can break them down into a few other, oh, my hair's doing a thing again. <laughs> Every video, my hair's doing a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to avoid this by getting earbud headphones, but that was where the microphone issue was from before. Anyway, going back, sorry, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but that, yeah, that when it's this very specific 
uh, question that you have going into the spread, they, you can break it down in a few simple ways to really illuminate it, but that's, so it's going to be like, I, I can't do this, so there's, why can't I do this? How am I going to get past this? And what is causing this? Like those, like I think the how, why, and what is the main consideration when it comes to a situation. Sometimes we might want to throw in who, depending on what's going on there. But or it's like when or where. But yeah. yeah, but it's it's mostly like the main interrogators. Like I think in journalism, those are considered the interrogated questions: who, what, when, mm -hmm. where, why. Yep. Um, so we can we can apply those main interrogators as needed to that very specific situation. And that's cool. But that's a small spread to me. Oh, oh okay, where you have one question, like, I'm gonna build a spread on, oh, I wish we had, we just should have come up with some examples. Here. Oh, golly. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just really quickly look through my spread Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and while Raven does that, the other, uh, group that I thought of of questions and ways of creating spreads and like starting questions for spread um, is the category that it's it's broad it's a wide open sort of situation <laughs> I love that it just like cut to page turning um, <laughs> <laughs> with force um, I'll go so more quietly <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> so under that umbrella of like types of a question you could have like you know I want to work on my magical practice I want to work on my tarot practice I want to I want to analyze what is happening at my job um, that there's a bunch of stuff going on there and I just can't get a handle on what's actually going on and how to move through whatever conflicts and difficulties are coming up so when it's a category like that there are so many questions that are going to be really specific to your situation that are going to be illuminating and so you can look at you know what's my highest vibration which is one that I used in the spread that I'm going to share with you um, yeah I like that question a lot uh, like my favorites are looking at blocks and how to break blocks and where focuses should be. I like to do to-do lists. I like to um, really like have an action point. And I think this was kind of funny because when Raven and I were talking about this, we both figured out that when it comes to spreads, we have different styles as often happens in that I have very action oriented spreads that I want to know like, all right, what am I doing out the gate here? Whereas Raven, you had like very, um, I, like understanding. Like it was, yeah. yeah, it was a very compassionate kind of spread in that you really were trying to figure out what was going on. And then I guess the action would follow just from that understanding. To me, I'm like, no, nah, Taro, you got to You got to make me my to do list. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. did you find any good examples? No, because honestly, I don't, I only write down category spreads that can be adapted to multiple things. That's right. And, and um, Holly said, ooh, spread Bible. So I just want to share really quick. Um, the front half of my old tarot journal is all the readings that I did. And then like an idiot, I started halfway through and thought, oh, well, let me start, you know, throwing in all my, my favorite spreads. So not all of these are mine. Um, a lot of these, especially if there's a star next to them, are someone else's design. Some, some of them have been adapted. Um, it's just pages and pages of my favorite, favorite spreads. So this is my spread Bible. Hmm. Mm. So my, oh, look, look at that. Allie's Daily Draw. Oh, I made that. You did. <laughs> I have one of Kelly's spreads in here. Kelly's not with us right now. I've got um, someone's Halloween reading spread, which is freaking amazing. I don't know. You guys are, tarot communities are cool. I like what you do. Okay. I have a spread Bible too, sort of, and I did the exact same thing that you did. This started off as one thing. This was supposed to be my tarot business journal, mm -hmm. and it still is to a degree, but I spend a lot of time building spreads for clients. So <laughs> this is kind of just turned into like, all of the spreads that I've made for my clients' journal. Yep. If, so if I'm not going to show one. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not going to show those because it's got personal stuff that's in there. Um, but yeah, uh, let me see. Yeah, no, there's nothing in here I can show. <laughs> but I, it does have the spread that I did for us today. So okay. we'll look at that later. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for specific question things, it's easy to sit down and not do like a journaling crafting session once you get into the habit of it. And maybe that's why we haven't recorded those. Um, an example of a question that I would ask is I'm having an issue with my mom at my wedding. So what can I do to make her more comfortable at the wedding? Uh, what can I do to make myself more comfortable at the wedding? And how can I honor my feelings around her the best at that wedding? Like, that's, that's kind a, of, yeah. That's a pretty, I think those are pretty specific kind of questions that it's like, it's got a specific day. It's got a person it's centered around as well as myself. And it's got the specific issue that's going on included in the question already. So breaking it down is a little bit easier. I got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I think we're good for questions, and we're at the stage where I'm distracted by your lovely chats. Is there anything fun going on in there you want to talk about? Well, no, honestly, what happened was Kelly is here. Um, oh, oh, yay. And I did, I'm no, I know people do this thing where they respond to someone in their head, but they don't actually type anything. So I was literally <laughs> thinking at you, Kelly, like, and this is a fantastic spread, and I love it. But I realized I wasn't typing it, and then I was just staring at the screen. So let's get back. <laughs> On topic. Excellent. Okay. So after question, once you've determined what sort of questions you want to ask, I think that does lead into size very nicely. Mm -hmm. Because the questions will inform how big your spread's going to be. Right. Simple things. Or if you want to keep them simple, like honestly, how you approach your day, <laughs> it could be a 12 card spread but ain't nobody got time for that in this house. So it's four cards max if we're going to just talk about the day. <laughs> um, but other things, yeah, I want 12, 13, 14 cards because they are important and you're probably only going to look at that question and look at that category once every few weeks or months. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's that one spread that's, medium famous the radwe radu radhues radhu anyway the spread uh the radhues wheel is it called the wheel yeah radhues wheel right sounds right 78 cards whole deck it's the whole deck it's scary <laughs> mm -hmm. And like, I think one person on Tumblr said it took them 5 hours to not only lay out but also interpret um, yeah, that's a once a year, once every five years kind of trip, isn't it? It is. I did a, um, back when I was picking up Lennermans, I forget who, where is her books right over there and I can't see it. Uh, one of the really big Lennerman books has a, like, a houses of astrology mm. Lennerman mm -hmm. thing. I swear I took two to three hours on that sucker. Um, but sometimes you need that. Sometimes. And sometimes it's so nice to just do that, to be like, I'm having a tarot date with myself and I'm going to do this ridiculously in depth spread. Mm hmm That's a treat, isn't it? Yeah. Um, is there anything, I don't think we have anything more to talk about with that. Size. Yeah, no, that's size. And then the last thing we wanted to talk about so far as crafting is determining shape. Yes, and this really depends on how much of a nerd you are, and if you <laughs> and what kind of what kind of a nerd you are. Yes, yes. Um, ooh, a Katsy did a twenty-two card spread, and it was amazing. I bet. Ooh, exciting! That's that's a nice hefty, hefty yeah. chunk. Would it? I, I'm so twenty-two is pretty significant. I'm just like, is it based off the major arcana? And I'm starting to build a twenty-two card spread in my head right now. Okay, it's gonna have to wait. Yep. We have, All right. <laughs> we have <worked> <laughs> um, but yeah, so doing shape. Yeah, and here, ooh, here we go. Perfect. Um, 
okay, this is one of those, those spreads that came from Eclectic Tarot. And it was one of the first ones that I latched onto and I did for a lot of, a lot of um, readings for myself and for other people over the years. It's the Infinity Winding Path, or I called it Winding Path, but you can see that it, it makes the infinity shape. Oh, we talked about what that thing is called a it's while a, ago. It's a lemniscape. Lemniscape, right, yes. I knew that word. With a T, not a P. <laughs> right. I said that. That's totally what I said. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> it's not a vegetable. You're a vegetable. No, you're not. <laughs> Scapes are delicious, people. And they're, I think they're herbs, not vegetables. Anyway. <laughs> um, so that's, that's one way of doing a spread, is by making a shape. Or a shape. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can. The shape can either dictate how many cards are in the spread, or how many cards, how many questions you have to answer, how many cards you want to use, can then dictate the shape. And we have one question, um, really quick. Do you ever plan for more than one card in a position in a spread landscape? I think we'll have different answers for this. I say yes, and not only do I ever do that, but that's included in the spread I made. I like the complexity of having more than one card in specific questions. I want to know how, like, how, like, the fullness of the energy. So sometimes I'll do two to see sort of, I don't know if I'm making sense. I think so. You're kind of making sense to me. <laughs> it's, so I'll put down two cards for one question when... I I want extra depth. I want extra oomph. And but I won't just keep throwing cards on top because I don't understand it because that's just going to make things confusing. It will be planned. Oh, when okay. I do that. All right, for me it's very different. Sometimes I will draw another card on top to clarify. It was not planned. And then the other thing that I will sometimes do is if I guess if my brain is subpar that day <laughs> I will I will plan to do um, a tarot card in each position and then an oracle card accompanying it and letting them talk in kind of a sentence and I love that I love that so much that's one of my that's a new favorite way of using oracle cards um, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of that way uh, but yes yeah I definitely do plan Mo like it's it's mostly planned if if I let myself put down an extra clarifying card, I almost have to be like, okay, only one. If you don't get it after this, you don't get it. Just move on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because it, it's just an eternity of like going through the deck for, for me personally. Like it's like opening the floodgates of like, look at more cards. I want to look at more cards. Um, I remembered something that when we were talking about this workshop that Rhea just brought up. I hope I'm saying that right. Sorry if I'm not. Is that a love hurricane that I see? What is that? Can't see. Um, by the way, Re said the shape could also impact how the cards interact in the interpretation, which was something that was so critical to you. Yes. Which yes. I could almost care less about, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I. That's how I figure out my shapes. Is I don't. I know Raven has her way of loving shapes and like making them make an actual pattern or based mm -hmm. off of something. I mean, you were working on a ghost spread. Yeah. When we were talking before, that was super cute, the cutest little <laughs> ghosty. Oh my goodness. And so I was using the points of the ghost or parts of the ghost uh, to figure out this one issue. And so for me, I, I'm not nuts about using actual shapes or existing shapes. I totally want to have things in like blocks and chunks and areas because I want to see like which card is looking back at this other section that we were talking about and, like maybe those are related or um, if there's like a just like a swath of red running through one area I want to be able to see those patterns and shapes within my shape mm -hmm. yeah. yeah which is why our spreads look very different oh yes <laughs> oh yes yes it's great and it's that's the fun thing it's like you can identify your style it's almost like a writing style because it's it's your reading style yeah um i want to show just real quickly i didn't write down who made the spread only that someone else made it but 
as some of you have probably seen it on Tumblr, the morning mug spread. It's so cute. It's like in the shape of a little mug. Can you see the shape of the mug? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and I think that's a, that is a pretty divisive line for most tarot readers is like, does it look like an arrow or a mug or a moon or a doorway or a key? And yes, then for me, it's it. just like, yeah. can, I, can I see the patterns in this block of cards? <laughs> like, yeah. I love nine card spreads doing the full like three, 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 mm -hmm. so that I can read the columns, read the rows, see the diagonals, look at the corners, which uh, according to Potter is a very Lennerman style of reading. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I also love like doing the five card, like the cross, because it's like a, being able to see how those cards interact with each other along those lines so cool uh yes yeah. so that's oh, I think, yes thank you colleen morning mug spread is by so aimless i'm going to write that down very good excellent see this is why we have how we help each other <laughs> <laughs> um so i think that i'm wondering if there's anything else in there that anyone would want clarification on before we move on to how we built our spreads because i think seeing those kind of ideas in action might be a good like a better learning tool than just us rambling about why we do stuff <laughs> yeah any questions or comments i know we've got one from holly sometimes i feel like the shapes can kind of water out a spread i think and i think you're in that camp and i yeah. say whatever yeah. whatever you guys <laughs> It's like, I think they're adorable when they've got like, when they're built off of like a mansion or something and it's like the windows and the door and the gables and stuff and that's sweet. Um, also, oh wait, another thing, theme. Sometimes I do build my spreads off of a theme, not a shape. For example, TV shows. <laughs> Like, I will sometimes do general spread, like general-ish spreads using, say, like Orphan Black or Buffy or Dollhouse or any of those other super nerdy shows that I absolutely adore. There's a Sailor Moon one cooking in the back of my brain right now because I just started watching Sailor Moon Crystal. <laughs> Wait, so what, what shape does it take? Or, like, none at all? It's just one card after another? Well, and that's the thing is that it's not so much that it's the shape. It's the questions are informed by the theme. So whereas some with like visually themed spreads the shape informs the positions whereas with mine they're a bit more like uh, th uh, uh i don't have the right word Arch archetypes like i'm looking at the archetypes within the shows or like things that, themes that come up within the show so i'll base my questions off of those ideas and see okay i do that too theme things on something and Colleen, I hear you because when you do themes, sometimes they become a shape for that reason. They make <laughs> a shape from the show. Right, I, right. I don't understand how you could not get a shape out of that, but that's that's why we work so well together. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, like, maybe I'd think of it, I think I'd be okay with doing like a map because of, the nature of maps, I'd be okay working off of like making a map shaped spread sometime. What in the world are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I've gone off on a million tangents. All right, bringing it in, Ali, what's the idea here? So far as like using an image to build a shape, the way that I build my spreads, I'd be interested in using like a map as the basis for one, like of a location or a fictional location to try and figure out how issues are interacting that way. Does that make sense or is that crazy? I'm, I'm lost because a map is a square and it's all filled. Oh yeah, no, using the landmarks within the map. Okay, well that's pretty cool. Yeah, and so <laughs> like I think I a that. square, what are you doing? <laughs> You just put down this bunch of cards. It's the exact same spread you always make, Allie. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like using the landmarks, landmarks like you know, a lake or a city or a country location or okay. significant locations like that. I'd be okay with that. Sorry, right, that was um, I went weird there. My apologies, y'all. We have, I think, the most active chat that we've ever had, which is awesome. <laughs> Um, a few things. 
a little criticism that you have no Game of Thrones spread. Um, <sighs> let it go. Um, <laughs> a request to learn more about your Sailor Moon spread. I'm working on it. It's cooking. It'll come. I will. You know what? I'll post that on Tumblr. That's one that will go up on Tumblr. Okay. People are working on Once Upon a Time spreads. Oh Colleen did a Western themed one that turned into a six chamber gun. Cool. Kelly has a Sailor Moon spread where each card is advice from a Sailor Scout. Okay. See that? That's what I was thinking about doing. Why would you do? Okay. So I love you. <laughs> so there's already one. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do one though. No, I, I'm. I'll add that information and then let it continue cooking and <laughs> see what comes out for like changing the shift. Shifting it a little bit. Maybe I'll do a villains one. I don't know. And one more. I'm going to bring up one more thing from the chat because I think it's so cool. Um, and I've, I don't know that I've seen your name before. Hello, Kay. Uh, who would love to take a mall map and make a spread out of that. So Hot Topic, PacSun, Cinnabons. <gasps> That's amazing. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> There are some good malls for that in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Like, there are, there are a few really good malls for that in Toronto. Oh, golly. Okay. Okay. Bringing it in. That's amazing. Um, All right. So the spread that we made. No, not yet. I don't think yet. Okay. Okay. We do have, there's two, two little things we have to talk about first. One, <laughs> sorry, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to pay attention to <laughs> what we're doing. Um, the non-spread spread. Right, yes. Um, so when we completely abandoned the whole spread idea and why we would do it, um, yeah. You do it when you're, you just want to have a conversation with the deck and you just want to draw some cards without, you know, holding all the questions. Yeah, when I'm already feeling pretty, like, overwhelmed and just want, it's just like, just tell me, just tell me what to do. <laughs> just like, just tell me what you've got to say or what I should be thinking about. I don't even know what I'm thinking about right now. And mm -hmm. I'll even smoosh them out. And then like, instead of shuffling or anything, I'll just pick them from this puddle of cards that I've made on my desk. Mm -hmm. I've lost a couple cards that way. Okay. Um, I have started to do a thing. Okay, a little bit of backstory. One of the first tarot readings I got was from this guy in Rochester, New York. And he read tarot in one of the strangest ways that I've ever seen. He would he would shuffle the cards, put one down, break the deck, and look at the bottom. And not pull that card out, and not, it, he, it was just kind of like, he would go like, huh, or mm-hmm. And then he would keep going. And then every so often he'd look at the bottom of the deck or he'd break it and look at the card. So there were all these cards that were informing what he was going to tell me that never made it out onto the table, which is a right. neat way of preserving cards. And I never intended to do that also, except, so I stopped reading with, um, with reversals, which means I, when I pick up the deck to start shuffling, I look to see that I have it right side up. So I'm always looking at the bottom of the card before I ever do anything. And then what I started noticing was as soon as I picked up the deck and I looked at the bottom card, it was incredibly relevant. It would just where whatever I needed was there. So I started to make it a habit that when I would, I would do cards, do cards, <laughs> so eloquent. <laughs> What I would um, do readings, I would do my shuffle, I'd throw down a few cards, and then if I felt like I just needed a little little something extra, I'd look at the bottom of the deck. So, I don't, I don't know. That's, that's totally a non-spread thing to do. It's just like having that little extra information, little more like underneath of what's going on. Like that's how I imagine it. With you're looking at the bottom of your deck, you're looking at what's underneath everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like the underscore, the final word, the, the, if you weren't sure before, you can be sure now. <laughs> right. Sort of thing. Yeah. And there's... Yeah, people do it and consider it shadow cards. Yeah, sorry. Yes. No, 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 that's good. Uh, the thing yeah. I was going to mention is with looking through the deck, we talked about as well this one that was, I think it's kind of popular on Tumblr, 
looking between your birth card and your year card or something like that, or like having arbitrary cards, like look at the, find the wheel of fortune in your deck mm -hmm. and what's behind it and what's in front of it are significant in some way that I can't remember right now because I have the memory of a peanut. Yeah, you can do, yeah, that kind of non-spread spread I love, where you don't even pull out any, I mean, you can pull out the cards, cards between the sun and the moon. Yeah, like Holly said, um, I love, I love those because sometimes you just want to spice it up and do something different. <laughs> yeah, just try something new. Um, Paul Foster Case, I've brought him up like a million times because he uh, totally weirds me out on some level. I need to actually like read about or read some of his books. But the first operation just like, it does something to my brain that confuses me and it intrigues me. That So that would be a non-spread where he cuts the deck into four uh, piles and then looks for the significator within those piles and whichever pile has a significator each pile having been designated an element or a suit would determine whether or not the reading would go forward if it was in the appropriate theme for the question um, and some other people have used the same operation to try and figure out sort of like the shadow card like what the underlying theme of the reading is going to be if it's going to be emotionally based even if it's a question about business, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's just such a weird, it's such a weird idea to me. Like, so I guess like using the deck to tell us more without actually being within the spread is a thing. Sorry, I have to type something. Keep talking. Okay. All right. I'll keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, I love the ones like using the shuffled shape of the deck as the spread, like just, you know, within two cards, that one's super cool. Um, the devil, finding the devil is a big one for me because the devil is one of my birth cards. And so I like seeing like what crap I've let go of and what crap I need to let go of. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. And then like using the lovers, again, one of my birth cards because six and 15, um, similar way, what relationship stuff do I need to keep working on and what things have I let go of? Whether or not that's positive is up to my own personal interpretation, but like, I don't know, I'm getting married. You got to look at relationships a lot when you're going into that sort of thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's, that's, that's the non-spreads. I do really like free form reading, like just throwing down cards and like so you could even make up a spread on the fly without it being a spread at all that it's just you have your deck and it's just like okay I want to know like what the hell is going on all right nine of wands <sighs> okay so why do I feel like I've got these like boundaries put in place okay king of wands <laughs> like you know and mm -hmm. so like just even keep asking why that why question over and over until you feel like you've hit on that one that hurts, <laughs> and then you got your answer. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of readers that will read for other people like that. It's kind of like a, they'll sit there with the question and then they'll just draw a fairly random number of cards. It's not totally random because they're going based off of some intuition or instinct, but the number of cards that come out and where they get placed is never going to be the same as it was for someone else that they read for. And it's, there are no specific questions for each card. It's just, here they are. This is what they're showing me. And from the number that are there and the placement, I will figure out what they're trying to say. Yeah. That's yeah. too much work for me. That's a lot of work. <laughs> that is a lot of work. Um, maybe that would be fun to try doing for a while. I think I could only really do that with in-person readings. Mm. I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. Would I? Anyway. Something, something to think about. Um, and it could even be like just telling a story, like putting down cards in a row and it being like a chronological story. Mm -hmm. um, like without it being a spread at all. And I mean, that would probably work amazing for writers like you, Raven. I, one of my old, um, oh, my old go-tos when I used to do, and I'm sure someone created this, but it's so general that, God, I can't imagine ever being attributed to someone but if it is just correct me the circle spread so this is what I used to use with client readings all the time a card would go in the middle for them and then going out from like about 10 o'clock back around with the circle would be the rest of the cards um, and 
the cards surrounding the person in the center were just, what is it? Guidance, insight and guidance. And I noticed that with that, that circular shape, the spread would tell a story. Usually the first couple cards on the circle were things that have already happened and then it would turn into where they are and then it would turn into where they're going. Oh, it's like a clock. It's yeah. like a clock. Yeah. For someone who doesn't like shape spreads, I'm like, it's like a clock. Allie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one more thing we should talk about before sharing our, our what we created. I know, you're so excited. I am, I'm going to show off. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> um, and that's what cards, what and what deck you use in a spread. And by what cards, I mean whether you use tarot or oracle. Yes, I forgot we were going to talk about this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. And like, because yeah, most of these are designed to work with tarot um, for a reason. Because tarot covers a lot. There's a whole bunch of them. <laughs> there are 78 <laughs> and 22 of them get into the archetypes of life and living and the other whatever math number that is get into like the day-to-day -day stuff was so 56 it's, that hard yeah yeah it is <laughs> i love you <laughs> so you have a really good balance of cards that are going to call out general life themes and that are going to call out people and are going to call out specific action and ways of being so I mean, you can kind of default to tarot for most spreads. This is very general, and of course, there are always exceptions. But yeah, yeah, because I know that Lenormand, um, you can use Lenormand spreads, but Lenormand is meant to be read very literally. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I have not actually started using it yet. I've just been reading about it. Um, but with a lot of tarot spreads, it, it, there's a subtext almost with tarot. That it's not a literal subtext. When it says to you, you know, three of three of pentacles, it doesn't mean actually building a church. But sometimes with Lenormand, a key is a freaking key. Mm -hmm. Lenormand is, you know what, that's another... That's another workshop, if we ever go oh, there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I need to learn way more. I need to read way more. I want to. There's a, there's one deck in particular I really want to pick up. But anyway. Um, but with Oracle cards, um, some of them are very in-depth, and some of them are very broad and have a ton of different themes uh, that can help depending on what kind of spread it is. Like, uh, you have, Raven, you have this beautiful deck of soul cards that I remember it was one of the first times we ever really interacted was when I saw your soul cards and I was just like, what are those? Let me grab them for people who have never seen them. Because they're gorgeous. Um, and I think those would be really great for looking into spreads about personal development and well-being and understanding, again, the hair. I'm sorry, I'm not going to touch it. I'm stopping now. Um, and so that deck, that oracle deck, would lend itself very well to a specific kind of spread. Um, I have the Alchemist Oracle, which I think would doesn't really lend itself very well to reading within a spread because uh, it, just, it has messages like receiving frequency and you are exactly where you need to be. So those messages a lot of the time are, are perfect just for like grabbing or understanding themes, but not necessarily for answering, you know, why is my mom being so awful to me during this whole wedding process. <laughs> like, if I was to get you are exactly where you need to be for that, I'd probably set those cards on fire. Um, <laughs> I'm not even joking. Yeah. No, some, it really depends on the deck. And I'm sorry if I'm repeating something that you said. I obviously could not hear you. Yeah, I was doing my whole ramble thing, so carry on. Okay. You do you. Okay. Yeah, some Oracle cards are going to be really good for actually getting into specifics if they get specific but if they are broad and I'm coming to this realization with the deck that I made like you're a little bit limited in what you can ask it's and a bit broad but you can talk about but yeah but sometimes you need that sometimes you want that yeah um, I love it for personal readings like I use your deck like that's I don't read for other people with your deck that is mine that's for Alex. <laughs> 
Hashtag for Allie. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> really, okay. I'm, I'm just getting caught up looking at these cards. So soul cards actually, I think, kind of sit somewhere in between Oracle and Tarot. Um, they have no numbers, no titles, no book. And you could do, I mean, you. I think you honestly could get all the answers that you needed using these cards because there are so many and the images do vary so much. And if you connect intuitively with cards, then these are so easy to, to tap into. Um, there are some weird cards in here. I love some, them. Some really gorgeous ones. So a lot of faces, a lot of people, some animals. Oh, <laughs> Um, so yes, the whole point of this is that even within the genre of Oracle cards, you're going to get some decks that play better than others that speak different languages. And you just really have to practice with each deck and feel them out before you know, you know, when I come to you with this question, I'm going to get satisfactory answers. Trial yep. and error. Yep. Can we talk about the spreads we made now? Yes! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> so right. the spread question category that we picked was actually from Kelly. No. And no? No. I'm the worst. Oh, right. No. Okay. Side note. Kelly, your spread question about fitness? I'm doing that. That's... I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make you that spread just from me because I want that spread. Side side thing. Sorry, I got mixed up. So Raven, you're going to introduce this because I am awful. And okay, I'm actually a little bit awful too because the person whose question that we picked, like I know them, I follow them, but they share a name that is so close to someone else that I work with that I can't separate the two. So I know oh. that if I say it, it's going to be wrong. So I'll just, if you're here in the chat, please. I just don't, I just don't want to say the, the wrong thing and look like a total jerk. I already look like a jerk. It's but at least okay. I, I won't. <laughs> Honestly, like at the Tragically Hip concert that we had in our backyard, I spent a good portion of the evening meeting and really enjoying chatting with this gentleman who I thought it was the first time that we'd ever met. And he was just like, no, no, we talk every time I come visit my friends here. You know me. And I was just Aww. like, mm-hmm. My excuse, <laughs> oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you. You guys, it's fine. It's, I, I have a really good excuse and it has to do with names and the way my brain processes them. Anyway, it was the, it was the, um, the request for a spread about starting new projects. So raise your hand. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> You're here. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're here, and I'm pretty sure I'm staring at your name. But I just want to... We can put it in the show notes, too. Like yeah. yeah. Up, you can look that up, and we can make sure we get it right so that they can have lovely credit because it was a good idea. It was a really good idea. Yes, Colleen. And here's, here's the thing. I was going to call you Cody, and you're not Cody. <laughs> because of Colleen and Cody. Ugh. You got Colleen mixed up, my love. So stressful. <laughs> I'm the worst because I'm just, I'm totally that person that's like, don't worry, this is a safe space. There's a moth going on. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm like, this is a safe space. You can say anything here. And then as soon as Raven says something, I'm like, bah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm the yeah. worst. I'm sorry. All right. So, Colleen, thank you for your amazing question. And thank you to everybody who submitted questions. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But this one was awesome, and I had so much fun making it. So it is under the category room of or grouping of spread question types, and that is for a new project. Like, let's do a spread on a new project. That moth is driving me crazy. Okay, sorry. Focus. Um, and so the spread, can I show mine? Yeah, yeah, you, you're going first, Alex. Okay, yay. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so this is the spread that I made is big, is not a little one. 
new project. So this, you can see, this is our two cards for one question. Friend right there. And the way that I would probably look at this too is just see how all these cards are looking around at each other and how they're talking to each other. Because especially in a new project, there's a bunch of stuff to talk about. And when I explain what the numbers are for, these guys are going to talk to these guys a lot. Hmm. Yep. So do you, did you have a theme for this? Nope. I just went with, if I was starting a new project, what do I need to know? Holy cow. What do I need to do? What, like, wh how would I want, like, what information would I want to move forward with? Mm -hmm. um, so one, two, and three, our friends right here, these are the check your ego column because that's a thing for me, and I think it's a fun one to include. So why am I taking on this project? How may I block this project? And what is my highest vibration for this project? Oh, we are so different. Oh my God. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then four and five up here, these, these are our challenge cards. What is the greatest challenge to this project? And how can I overcome it? Six, seven, and eight are um, immediate actions, things that need to happen right now. So independent actions, but they probably feed into each other. So you'd have to look at that and just be like, oh man, I do this one first, or this one's part of that one. But they're immediate actions. This is the to-do list. And these are the nine, 10, and 11 are the tools needed to do that to-do list. And so that's how they might talk to each other. As to like which I one see. yeah I like that a lot yeah. and then 12 and 13 are end game what does this what does success look like for this project because a lot of the time I have an idea of what I think successful is and by the time I get to the end of the project it both looks nothing like that and also is wildly successful so <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's why I wanted the two cards because then you could break that like is this what I think success would be and this is what it actually would be like working with those two energies to really understand the complexity of a question like what does success look like cool Ooh. okay I'm that's wondering I I'm thinking your your spread might be better and more useful to more people because of one how many questions you have in there and two um, it could apply to a lot of different projects. I think mine might only apply to hyper creative projects. That's cool. Hey, niche stuff has a place. Niche stuff has an important place. <laughs> an important place. By the way, people love your spread. And you. we don't worry, guys. We will post it on Tumblr and the Facebook group. That's so part of the reason it. why I made it so pretty, was so that I could take pictures of it later. <laughs> Me in the meantime, I'm going to make up a little digital image of it. I'm scared to share this now. No, oh my God. No. <laughs> he totally showed me up, and that's okay. Because I'll make a really nice digital image later. Okay. Yeah, you were. You kicked my ass with that. I'm going to take a picture and then go into Snapseed and be like, turn up the game. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, here's my spread. I hope you can see it. Uh, I just realized it forms the letter I. That was not intentional. Can you see it okay, Ellie? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and this would be so much better if I had just done some little drawings, but you can imagine them. All right, so the whole, the whole thing is framed around cooking and cooking a dish mm. because I don't, that, see, that seemed to fit. It's immediately what came to mind, and I... When I think about starting a project, all I can think is mise en place. So we have one, two, three here. That's kind of like your little bowls set in front of you for the project. And these are the mise en place. Um, number one being your main ingredient. So basically the question changes a little bit with each position, but it's mostly the same question. It is... Um, how do I create this? How do I create, like, what do I need for the main ingredient? What do I need for the seasoning? What do I need for the spices? And I'm going through it really quick. What do I need for the, um, the energy, the, the heating implement? 
what vessel, what environment do I need to create it in? And then there's more, but we'll go one by one. So we are so different and I love it. This is exactly what we were just talking about, about how I'm like <laughs> action, action, action. And Raven is full on understanding, understanding, understanding. And I, I, I love it. Yep. So you've got um, main ingredients and I'm sorry, I'm, I've got like six different notes everywhere because I was prepared today. I was not prepared. I'm sorry. So the main ingredient would be like um, your main inspiration? It would be like what if it's missing? Will this, how will this not work if this is missing? I'm not saying those gotcha. words right. No, no, it's like you can't have beef bourguignon without beef. Exactly. Yes. So it's like, what is... Yeah, is then it's just wine slurry. <laughs> if it's chicken, is it beef? It's, is it zucchini? Yeah, so you've got your main ingredient, number one. Number two are the spices. So this is the creative twist that you're going to put on the main ingredient. This is like your oregano and paprika, or like, um, what did it end up being for me? Because I use this. I, I use this for a project that I'm working on right now. My spice was the emperor. <laughs> Which, <laughs> I, yeah. Oh, what a jerk, Taro. Thanks. <laughs> I love it. Which to me meant that my spices were almost non-existent. Uh, it was not to go too creative and to just keep it nice and clean and simple. Um, butter and garlic. It's butter and garlic. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, number three is your seasoning. And yeah, I, spices are different than seasoning. Seasoning is like salt and pepper. It's what you want to make sure that you hit into the project or the dish every step along the way. You season every step. So in my in my little test, my um my seasoning was the star. Oh. So it was just like put put hope and faith and magic on every little part of it. <laughs> it was so cool. All right. <laughs> People are spicy emperor. Um, <laughs> no, he is bland oh. chicken. He is bland chicken. <laughs> Butter and garlic. All right, so yeah, those are your mise en place. And then here is like the um, the stove, I guess. I called it this position heat, it being the energy that's required. So are you going to boil this project? Are you going to fry it? Are you going to whatever? What kind of heat, what, what kind of temperature and energy are required for it? Um, the next one is what would sit on top of the heat, which is the vessel, you know, frying pan, pot. Or is it actually the oven or a dehydrator or a wok? Yeah, and that being the the environment that you need and the project needs in order to be made, which could say something like your desk is a mess, clean it up, or <laughs> make sure you're in this kind of mindset, or you know, release this in person as opposed to digitally. Yeah, it's all star seasoning. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Put hope in everything. Okay. Yeah, okay, so... Oh, oh my god, we're at seven, and I said we had to leave. I, that's why you're giving me that look. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got I wasn't away. sure if I should do a hand signal or something. Okay, right, you finish up your spread, my dear. I know you've got to run. I know. Real quick. Yep, okay. Heat, environment, and then the top three are kind of... What does... What results does the um, the project or the meal have? So you have um, six. Is this six over here? Yeah, my point. Yes. Yep. Six is the scent. So it's the attraction of the project. Mm-hmm. Wafting. Seven is the taste, which is the enjoyment of the project. Like, how are people going to enjoy this? And eight is the nourishment. So what are the results? What is the tangible result that comes? I'm so disappointed you didn't have plating. God damn it. <laughs> Garnish. Garnish and plating. I'm writing it down really quick. Okay. <laughs> and this is why it's great to have a tarot buddy so that they can just be like, are you kidding me? You're missing this. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. That's what we, we made for you, everybody. Two, two different, two very different approaches to starting a new project. And we welcome critiques. We welcome comments. Yes. 
we, we will do encourage i see new people yeah we will post them tumblr and the facebook group and we welcome new people here because i see a couple new names join us yep. in the death and tarot facebook group we'll get a link out there on tumblr and on the end of this uh this video yeah, when we do the show notes we'll we'll have We'll have a couple credits and our Facebook page will be on there. Come join us. It's so much fun. Um, I think the most active we got was when we were talking about our tarot journals because we all got hugely nerdy about it. But I think that uh, spread crafting is another good meaty topic for us to hit on over in the Facebook group. Raven uh. at her page. Okay. And so <laughs> But it is seven o'clock, and uh, any last minute questions, Raven? Or yeah, like anyone? You... Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say we can address those in the Facebook group. Yeah, we can if they come up and we see them. <laughs> um, yeah, I just don't have a an easy way to get to the Death and Tarot Facebook page on my husband's computer to put right. in the chat. So I'm sorry I can't link it right here right now. Yeah. But we'll find a way. We'll uh, find a way. Yeah. Email us or hit us up on Tumblr somehow, and we'll get we'll get back to you if you don't see the link when we put it up. Rambling. I've got Yay! to go. All right. We love all of you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this was so much fun. I'm so happy we got to talk about spread crafting, and I really hope it helped. And you guys totally helped me. So you know, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> We love you guys. See you. Oh, not next month. We're not doing a workshop next month. Oh, yes. Notice. Hiatus. Uh, we will not be doing a workshop next month. There will be a video coming out. Uh, yes. Special <laughs> surprise video because there's a big event happening next month that Raven's going to come in. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we will not see you next month. We will see you in October, but please keep in touch with us throughout that time because we love you. <laughs> Yes, and with that, we're signing out. Good night. Mwah. Good night. <laughs>